Hi, this is Dina Tollefson. Hey, we go. I had a little technical snafu, but um, should we, we should be in good shape here now. So uh, welcome to my studio, and today's topic is painting pears and acrylic paint. So um, this is just a fun little uh, thing to do, and you can paint along with me uh, if you like, or you can just watch, and I hope that you join me on the chat. So I'm just going to reach over here and turn my... Uh, Make sure I've got the thing so I can watch as you are joining me. So, all right, very good. And I also want to thank you for all the support that you have given me um, on my channel. And I, I hope that I'll see you again in the future, too. So let's get started. The first thing to do, and I'm going to reach across here. The first thing is I'm going to, oops, I'm going to see my arm here. I uh, started with this canvas. So first, before we get to this, uh, just this is just a little six by eight Premier Blick uh, canvas. There's a little bag of desiccant in the bottom. And uh, what, what this is doing is this has uh, got a frame around here, stretched canvas, it's an inch and a half thick. And uh, what I did is I took this and then I used this uh, fluid yellow ochre and uh, what well, took the wrapper off first, of course, but then um, ended up with this little guy here. Just used a big brush and, um, and then put the uh, yellow ochre on. The reason I like to tone my canvas with yellow ochre is what this will do is it sets a nice warm um, start for the canvas and gets rid of the scary white because nobody wants to be scared when they're painting, right? So uh, let me put these away. Let me set these over here. And I'll talk a little bit now about what all we need, if you're going to be painting along with me, what all you might need uh, to uh, for supplies, what I'm using. Uh, of course, you can use your own supplies. This, uh, you can also do this in oil or uh, watercolor, um, you know, whatever you like. So let me just set this over here, and I'm going to slide my palette over. So this is my Masterston Stay Wet palette. And what I've got here is uh, uh, squeezed out different tube colors. And uh, what we have here, I'm also going to get a little green gold going. I have actually more colors than I think I'll actually end up needing, but there's something uh, very pleasing about seeing all the colors out on the palette. I don't know what it is, but I do like to have all the colors, and I will end up using this paint at the end. What I can do is just scrape all the colors together and make kind of a like a hybrid color, a, a neutral color. Just uh, got a new container of, um, of this uh, dioxazine purple. Love this color. But I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of this onto the, onto the Stay Wet palette. And if you are um, wondering, I have a video coming out. If you're wondering, what is this Stay Wet palette? I have an unboxing video coming up um, in the process of making. Basically, this thing is a container and then there is a sponge that you get wet and then there's a special paper that you activate. Uh, you have to get it in extremely hot water. What this will do is it'll keep your paint in the perfect uh, setup for humidity and um, so oh hi oh Master Arts says hi hello and also Bill Tollefson my dear husband is on thank you guys for um, saying hello in the chat I see we've got more people watching and you can just watch and if you want to say hello and chat you can and if not if you're feeling a little bit more shy you know no problem no problem with that as well so all right so let me get this little box out of the way and let's talk now about the other things that we need so um, and if you watched my acrylic beginner acrylic painting live stream that I did on Friday, uh, we went through some of these materials. So if you haven't watched that already, it, it might be helpful to you if you're interested in watching that. Uh, so now let's talk about the other things. So I'm going to be using a ruler to make a straight line. Um, I also have this. This is an engineering um, triangle. This actually was my uh, father, Dietrich Schaefer's. Uh, triangle when he was in college many many years ago and my father and mother live in Florida half the year so I say hello um, if you guys are watching or if you watch later um, hello mama and daddy so uh, here are what we'll use today are these brushes so I have all of my brushes and I'm gonna just move the paint this way now so we can talk now about brushes there we go 
And let's get our little canvas over here. Great. But now let's talk about um, let's talk about brushes. I'll move this paint over here. So the brushes today um, I'll be using, I will be using a, a liner brush. This is an American Painter liner brush. And I also will be using American Painter Filberts, different sizes. What do we have here? We've got, uh, these are both 12s. Let me grab some of my other brushes because everybody loves a nice brush hoard, right? Kind of a hoarding thing, I guess, for us, uh, for we artists. But here's some other painter, uh, American Painter brushes I'll be using. Um, see what size is that one one's not marked is it here we go this is a three-quarter inch uh, wash brush it's a flat brush so I'm uh, going to be using just a variety of different sizes and as I use the brush you'll be able to see it um, as I pull that out all right very good the other thing is uh, I will be using um, these uh, paper towels so you can use rags you can use paper towels a variety of different things that you can use to wipe the extra paint off. I like to keep kind of a neat and tidy space. So, uh, oh, Van, uh, Hugo Van Gogh, hi. Thank you for joining. So, um, uh, what we're gonna do now is let's just get started on the actual painting. So, and I'm gonna move these out of the way so I don't run my arm into them. Oh, and other, the other thing, last thing too, is some buckets of water. So I just have some empty buckets well, empty buckets. It was a sherbet container. And then I put some water in it, uh, about an inch of water, something like that. And I have two of them. There's this guy, and then there's this other guy. I use one with the cleaner water, and then one with the dirty water. And then I have a couple other containers just as standbys. But in order to, and I'm gonna reach across, I'm gonna, also, <laughs> and a knife. I'm also gonna be using a palette knife to do mixing. Um, if you're wondering about any of these art supplies, like, hey, you know, do you recommend certain brands, that kind of thing? I get that question a lot. I'm going to pull this paper over here. This is a, um, I have a, I'm an Amazon influencer, so I have a, a an Amazon shop. And if you type this in all the way, you can't just go to Amazon and search for my name, but if you type this in all the way, you'll see a page that I created where I've curated uh, and put a bunch of different um, recommendations for brushes, easels, uh, paints, uh, oil paint, ac acrylic paint, watercolor paint, uh, that kind of thing. So it's uh, amazon.com slash shop slash D-E-N-A underscore T-O-L-L-E-F-S-O-N. And um, if you do end up picking something from that, I, I am compensated by Amazon, but it's of no additional cost to you. So um, it's kind of a win-win. I guess you can kind of see what supplies are out there and what people recommend. And um, I'm personally recommending the ones, you know, I like the ones that are on here. So I've, I've picked out what I think are the good ones. So, so that's something if you're interested. And now let's get on to the uh, canvas. So I'm gonna start this. Let's use Daddy's, uh, my daddy. Let's use my daddy's uh, his rule here. So I'm going to mix up a little color to get started. And I, I you know, one way that you can do your painting is you can uh, paint. Let's get our yellow ochre. Can you see the yellow ochre over here now? Yeah. Um, one way that you can paint is you can go in and you can take the paint, uh, or you can use a pencil. You can get something like that. Some people will trace. Everybody has their way of how they want to get their image onto the canvas. Some, you know, everybody's got their way. I personally like to just go right in with paint. So I'm making paint out of, this is a little bit of um, phthalo blue red shade, and I've got yellow ochre, and I'm just gonna make what I'm just gonna call like a drawing color, D-R-A-W-I-N-G color. And let me add a little bit more of the yellow ochre to that. So when I put this on the canvas, if I want to, I'll be covering it later with other colors, but um, what this what this does is this allows me to uh, know, you know, and I can adjust the shapes, and, and you'll see that as we, as we go along here. So let's just get started. I'm gonna grab a brush. So this is a American Painter a size 10, just a short little guy, and it's called a chisel blender. So I'm gonna just dip that into the water, grab a little of this 
color, we just the drawing color that we just mixed up. And before I draw my line, I'm going to first establish, uh, I'm going to make two pairs. I'm going to first establish, and you might wonder, like, how do you know, um, like, you ever had that where you are, you know, drawing something or you're painting something, and you start up over here, and by the time you get over here, the subject is not in the place where you want it to go? Well, kind of a way to, um, to fix that problem is that you can actually go in and um, do what I'm doing here is uh, decide where the top and the bottom of all of your different marks are going to be. So, um, so for example, I've got, you know, this, I'm going to do two pairs and let's say I want to do, uh, you know, top of my pair. I don't want any taller than this. I'll have a stem, but I don't want any taller than that. And maybe edge of the pair will go here. Let's put another edge here. And I'm kind of, what I'm doing with this is I'm essentially uh, deciding how big something is by just putting a couple of little indications. So let's say that the pair, and then I can just start drawing. So uh, let's say his, his top, you know, let's say I want it to be like maybe a man and a woman pair, like a couple in love. So let's go and just kind of draw, you know, just draw in a basic little shape. And all of this can be adjusted then later. So let's say I want the end of it here, and then um, well, maybe this will be the guy and this will be the lady and she's, or, you know, I guess it could be two guys and, and two ladies, so it, you know, either way, just a loving couple. And um, what I'm going to do is take this and draw a line so I know I want my fruit to be, uh, you know, kind of uh, symmetrical, somewhat symmetrical. And then uh, let me also draw just a little line here to show the end of the, or where the table sits. And it doesn't have to be straight across. You can have it kind of at an angle if you like. But just doing this right away now, we know um, we have. A, let me make this one a little, maybe a little bit longer, so that the pair, the pairs are kind of size-wise balanced a little bit. And let's say maybe the end of this one goes here. So what we can do is we can draw a little bit over here, like so. And tell me in the chat, do you, um, when you do a still life, do you have a certain subject that you like to paint? Curious what, um, what people like to, when they make a, I'm just going to wipe this off over here. When you make a painting, what, what are your favorite subjects? I know that I've subscribed to a lot of you, so I already know, um, I think, I have a feeling what you'll be saying, but, but if you have a, a certain favorite, let me know. So now that I've gone in, and draw this initial shape with the chisel brush. I'm going to go in and kind of, I'll say, erase with water. This is just clean water. I'm going to go in and erase this shape here. So in this couple that we have here, we have kind of, this person's a little bit more like, I'll say a little more on the uh, rounded side. And some people are more rounded than others. <laughs> some people are tall and thin and some have um, a little bit more of an ample shape, an ample body. Okay, and we'll get this. Uh, what I reason I'm erasing this thing in the center is because I don't I don't necessarily want it showing up later in the painting. So that's why if these edges show up in the painting. That's fine with me, but I don't want a line going down the center to show. So that, that's why we'll just go and erase that guy. Okay. All right, and Fluid Acid Nojas says hi. Hey Fluid, how are you? Thank you for joining. And then again, oh also if you have a favorite color you like to use, let me know because uh, what we're going to do is I'm thinking this will be a light color here, but I'm trying to decide exactly what we're going to do for the top color here. And so that's something I'm going to be looking for some inputs on. All right, so now you can see we've been able to just draw the edges and we can just kind of figure out how we want those pairs to fit. So let's say I had a, you know, a painting that was this big. I could use that same method and just, you know, mark everything else out. So, uh, oh, and Lee Hendon says thank you. And thank you, Lee, for saying that. And um, I'm excited that you guys are here. So now we've got our basic shape here. And then now, um, really, it can be the fun can start. And decisions that you make when you go, and I'm going to flip my palette back over here so you can see the, these kind of these brighter colors. Um, the next decision that you, that you make is, do I want my pairs to be realistic? 
do I want them to be, um, and, um, oh, wow, Master Arts, you are almost there. Awesome. Congratulations. Um, so the, the next decision that you want to make or think about, I'll just, I'm going to make it so you can see the colors there a little better. Okay. And I'll move the brushes. Let me move the brushes here. There, that's better. Okay. So the next decision we want to talk about is on the uh, on this pear painting. Uh, we have a very abstract shape, and uh, literally you could just go and say put a color here, put a color here, and then just leave that color, and and you you have a pear painting. And so in the discussion of of what you know what is abstract, what is realistic, that kind of a thing. Uh, you start with something abstract, and as you add additional detail to it, it becomes more and more what we call representational or realistic. So I am gonna. I like to have something that's somewhat, somewhat abstract, somewhat realistic. Um, this painting, I'm going to be putting texture over the top later, or I could even leave it as a, um, you know, just as a smooth painting. So let's talk now about how to handle the uh, lights and the darks and the shadows in the, um, you know, in, in this painting. How are we gonna handle that? So, so the first thing that we can do is let's go in and let's establish where the highlight is. So I'm just gonna grab a little of our lightest light, which is the titanium white, and I'm gonna mark in here where the light is hitting, and we're gonna reserve this as a very light area on our pears. So, um, and then also thinking about pears, they have a, um, their bodies are kind of uh, uh, lumpy, I'll say, kind of a little bit lumpy. So when I'm putting the highlight in, I'm not putting in the highlight in a, um, in a, in a really strict way. I'm putting it in in kind of a lumpy way to try and get the feeling of the fruit. And now, uh, let's also think about where the shadow is hitting. So we know our highlights are hitting here on the pears. Let's go in and mark uh, the areas that we that we believe are going to be our shadow areas. So knowing that, I want this uh, bottom part to be maybe kind of a light or a white color. What I'll do is uh, is I'll set the canvas over here and let's mix up um, a couple of colors that we're going to use and just set the brush in there. Let's mix up, mix up some colors that we're going to use in the on the bottom of the painting. So that would be this area down here. All right. So let's grab some white, titanium white, and let's think about the area that's going to be um, in hitting the light. And I'm going to add a little bit of the diorolite yellow, a little bit of the yellow primary, and make a white that is actually like a white in sunlight. So it's going to be the lightest little yellow. That can be our area in that's having the light hit it. All right, and now let's mix up a color that's going to represent the area in shadow. So I'm gonna. So here's our area in light, and then we need kind of an area that's a little bit in shadow. So I've got this yellow ochre. What I can do is maybe add a little bit of purple to the yellow ochre. So this is just a little bit of our uh, dioxine purple. And let's get a little bit of that mixed up. And this can represent our area in shadow. I'm going to add a little bit of white to that also. And you see we can make and the yellow ochre together. All right, so you know what I need to add? I made this color and I need to add a little bit more yellow ochre. So let me come over here. There we go. That's better. All right, so this could be a shadow color. Now I need a little more purple in there, and we'll add a little of our this color here. Okay, that's a good color. So we have our area in light, we have our area in shadow for the, um, the table that the pears are sitting on. So now that we have these colors, we can take our brush, and I like to actually establish the colors first on the palette before putting them on the painting the reason I do that is because I feel like it make, gives me more confidence that I don't have to be like, oh, let me mix new color or, um, you know, oh, I don't like that, that kind of thing. We can always layer color on color, but, uh, but by doing this, 
on the palette, it's like we already have some decisions made as to what we're going to do. So let's just get this on here. So this is our color, our light color. And I'm even going to let it overlap. You see, I let it overlap on the on the pear a little bit. That's fine. I'm going to let a little of the um, underpainting show through because we want this to be um, what's called painterly, which means that we're when we say it's painterly, that means that we're um, that we're allowing our strokes to show and the emotion that we feel when we're painting. So I'm going to get, grab a little bit of this nice dark color that we just mixed. And this is going to be our shadow color. So I'm going to come around here on the fruit and I'm going to look and see where is my shadow occurring. And I'm just going to kind of indicate that here. And, we're, and since this is acrylic, what's super nice is you just keep adding. You can add more and more layers as you go. Uh, it's just a point of you put something on and then you can add more and more as, as you're working with it. Let's indicate a little shadow on I see a shadow on the stem. So let's get a little stem going. Let's get the shadow that's coming from the body of this pear going here. All right, that's nice. All right, great. Now, uh, let's also, um, I'm going to take a little of the yellow ochre and let's blend the color of the outside here. The shadow is taking form nicely. Well, thank you, Bill. Thank you, darling. I'm calling, I'm calling Bill Tollefson darling because he is my husband, so I, I don't want to be too forward with anybody else, but um, I can call him darling. So uh, Bill and I have been married for 30 years, and we went on a Viking River cruise this summer uh, to Europe, and it was just, oh my gosh, I want to go again. It was just the best. And, you know, I'm afraid of uh, an ocean cruise. I'm afraid of the water, <laughs> the creatures in the water. So um, being on a river cruise was ac actually kind of nice because my thought was, all right, worst case, if it would be terrible and we'd have to uh, abandon ship, then uh, we could just swim to the other side, you know, that, that kind of thing. But it was just fantastic. It's just a wonderful, wonderful time. All right, so we have just a little basis of what our shadow is going to look like here. And then now let's uh, let's talk about getting into the pears. And I'm going to go ahead and put a stem on this guy. So I'm going to go into our darkest color, which is our Mars Black. And then uh, let's get a color going on here. So hey, Caitlin Marie, I'm so glad to see you here today. And I loved your last video that you had. It was very heartfelt. I, um, you know, I think that People, when people are brave, like, uh, you know, you were very brave um, to talk about uh, anxiety and depression and mental health and that type of thing. And a lot of people, when they will, um, you know, you influence people and when they see that, that's going to be very helpful to them. So, you know, I say kudos to you. Yes. Okay, so let's just get these little stems going. So we have the very lightest thing on our painting, which are the highlights. And our darkest thing on the painting are going to be these stems. And we can play with these stems also as we go. And you can see too, you know, as far as colors go, uh, for people that like, you know, super earthy kind of colors, you can just be going with this and you could complete your painting um, in like autumn colors or that type of thing. And so, hey, Crazy Candy, good to see you. Thank you for joining. Um, so, uh, so. But I like, I personally am kind of really into super bright colors. So what I want to do is, um, is I, I want to complete our painting and I'm going to just move the canvas over so you can see a little bit more of the colors, the palette. There we go. Let's get this water. You know, nobody wants to see the dirty water. Let's just move the dirty water over completely. Okay. That's better. Oh yes. Okay. So now let's talk about establishing some of the depth and the uh, forms in the actual pair. So I'm gonna grab a little bit and in thinking about the rainbow, um, I'm gonna be using this idea of the um, lighter colors, like the yellows, and then go into orange and red. Um, I want to, to get the uh, areas that are supposed to be more in shadow. We're gonna be using a, uh, the darker colors. So let's start working from our way out. Let's get the yellow on here. And I'm going to just let this kind of layer in. 
on top of and touching our highlight. Just kind of loose and, and free. You see, I'm using a wash brush. You could use any brush that you like really to do this, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, you know, it's kind of nice to get familiar and have some favorite brushes. Um, but, you know, uh, whatever brush you want to use for this is fine. It just uh, whatever gets the job done. All right, so now we've got our yellow going. Next, let's add a little bit of this dirolide, uh, dirolide yellow. Um, this is a favorite color of mine. And let's just kind of lay in the other shapes here. So I'm going to connect this, kind of making a figure eight. And again, this is just very loose and painterly. And these first layers that we're putting in, you can go in and uh, you know blend these and smooth them and lay more paint on top. I rather than doing like a super blending thing, I like to just put strokes of color. I feel like it, it, uh, I feel like it has a little bit more oomph. Do you agree? What do you guys think? Tell me what you think. Do you like uh, super blended or do you like a little bit more, you know, rough edges? I hope that you don't say super blended because I'm kind of using rough edges here, but if you do, then I'll know. <laughs> I'll know how you feel. All right, so now let's come in with some orange. Let's go, uh, let's get bold here with this, with this guy. This orange happens to look very red. It's a kind of a reddy orange, this pyrrole orange. So let me grab this one. That's this guy here. And so um, I'm going to go in and after we put this strong color in, we'll go in and uh, have a transition between the diorolide yellow and the, um, there we go. Do you see that I'm just taking my brush, the paint is still wet, and by just, you know, just, and I'm pushing down onto the canvas, and I'm making some shapes like this. Uh, what we want to try and avoid is like a, you know, making it like, too much of a bowling ball. We want to think about the lines and edges that are actually on the pairs. Okay. Now, let's go in, uh, let's get even more bold and let's go to this red. So I'm going to move this over here so you can see I've got this red here. This is the, um, what red is this? Let me get my color back out. Oh, naphthol. It's a naphthol red. So let's put red here. And you should hopefully start to see that we're getting some three-dimensionality on our fruit. Let's get a little bit here and over here, okay. All right, next uh, we can come in with a, this is permanent alizarin crimson. I'm gonna go even darker yet, so we go darker and we're going cooler. And when I say cooler, I'm thinking about the, uh, the color wheel. And in the color wheel, you've got, uh, you start with on one end with um, red, and then you go orange, yellow, that kind of thing, and then you move into your greens and blues, and then eventually purple. So by putting these colors in, like the color wheel it is organized, and I can do another live stream at some point on the color wheel. But what happens is we can get kind of a feeling of um, three-dimensionality by just literally just kind of following those and putting those in that way. I'm going to reach now across and get, do you see this kind of, uh, it's a little bit of a transparent color and that one is the, what is that one? I think it's in a little too. Okay, where are you guy? Here, oh, permanent violet dark. It's a little bit transparent. It's kind of a great color. But I'm gonna get this permanent dark color here just at the bottom so we can get some additional definition. See how we can put this color and it can be used to define the bottom of the fruit. Just like that. And if any of you are painting along, you want to um, encourage you to, you know, just have fun with your colors because really it's, um, you know, you can have whatever colors you want in your pair. They can be, um, you know, hyper realistic or you can go a little bit more, as I'm doing, a little bit more expressive with the color. Here we 
we go. I'm also just allowing the, um, the paint to just move over. And now that we've kind of got these additional colors going, let's go in and um, start putting in a background. So in the middle, uh, let's mix up another color. And I'm thinking what we'll do is kind of a light color. So let's do a light color up at the top. And I um, hope everybody's good with blue. We're going to do a blue up there. Let me take some of the white that we have and let's mix a light blue. And let's just kind of see how oh, that'll be pretty. All right, and what, um, what I'm doing with this is I'm thinking about the overall color palette. It's just we're gonna have kind of this cream color at the bottom and then maybe these kind of wilder colors on the pears and then maybe some soft blues at the top. So, so let's grab, uh, grab some of this pretty blue that we just made and literally just go in and get that going like so. And if some of the toned canvas, some of the yellow ochre is showing in from the sides, you know, that's fine. I like that effect. And let's just go and I'm letting some of the paint brush up onto the fruit and letting the stem and I want it to all feel like not like there's a background and a foreground because actually technically there is no such thing as background and foreground. It's just everything is in space and it's, you know, what are you looking at it next to? So we can just carve the fruit out this way. So now uh, let's go back into this cobalt color, which is a little darker. And uh, so I'm going to blend him a little bit more. And I can just go right up to that edge that we established at the beginning and get that color going like that. There we go. And then you might say, oh my goodness, there's kind of a big difference between the cobalt color and then that lighter blue color. But that's okay. We can go ahead and um, do some blending and do an intermediary color. Um, I'm just looking for as much drama as possible in this little painting. So just adding a little water now, just dipping my brush in the water. And again, because I'm trying to get an expressive painting, an expressive pair, I'm not worrying too much about, oh, if I, you know, um, do I have a problem with this edge or that line or that kind of thing. That's just all stuff that we can finesse later or we can just leave it as it is because it's just something that's in the moment. All right, so now between these two colors, I'm gonna take, uh, let's maybe make a third color that's something in between. And you know, you know what, I don't wanna mix it with the brush. Let me go in and I'll mix it with the knife. Grab a little of the color that we just did. Let's maybe do some of this mixing color and then let's do some of this, um, this other blue, and let's just kind of see what we have here for a color. Okay, that's kind of nice. Look at that color. So how we did that was we had the yellow ochre, we had the phthalo blue red shade, a little bit of the cobalt, uh, and the cobalt mixed with white, and it makes this really kind of pretty color. So, oh, and thank you, Crazy, for saying, for saying that. I appreciate you. All right, so, uh, and you know what we can use I'm still just using kind of the same brush let's go back in and um, and let's lay in these other colors that are just on top of the first ones and modifying it by adding just a little bit of interest see we can just lay this other color right on top we'll get a little bit going here I think it kind of looks like a Maybe like an interesting wallpaper or, you know, something like that. All right. And now let's go back over here to the shadow. So I want to make this shadow a little bit darker. And then we also need to do something called grounding. 
So I'm going to reach in and get this smaller chisel brush. Um, let's do a highlight uh, on, the, on our pears. Let's get a little highlight on the stem. And we'll get him a little highlight there too. And I'm going to actually remove paint with water to establish the highlight. So that dark color that we have already on there is already dry. And let's just get a little highlight there. And let's get a little highlight there. All right. And then now let's go under here and let's do what's called grounding. So to ground the pear, I'm going to take a dark color. And what that means, that's so what I'm going to take this Daxine purple. You use any color that you like. If you wanted to use black, anything like that. We need to establish this very um, dark line right where the fruit meets the table. We need to establish that it is actually part of the table or sitting on the table. And that's called grounding it. Just like that. Okay, 3D. Well, thank you for saying it looks 3D. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Crazy candy. That's nice. Um, so I've got this color here that we mixed, uh, this grounding color. And what we now need to do is we need to mix the, we need to have a transition between the ground and the shadow. So we have this shadow color. Let's go and um, mix a color between the grounding shadow and the ground. And I'm going to use a little bit of this, um, this purple. And let's make a little of this other of the dioxazine purple. There we go. That's a good color. And a little of the white. Put a little of the white in there too. Just brighten it up a little bit. Because we can't have just only fun in the pears. We need to have, have a little color kind of spread around. All right, I'm going to move this, uh, this rag over here so we have more space for rags. Let's get a little bit of this wonderful color we just mixed up. And then let's have a transition between the grounding color and the shadow. And we'll let the shadow just fan out the way it is. Let's go back again with our grounding color. And just, you know, there's different ways to blend. You can, you can blend by laying color over color. You can blend by, uh, you know, actually taking a dry brush and doing it that way. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm just laying paint one layer on the other. And that's another way to blend. It's just literally with just contiguous uh, forms. And I feel like, you know, I feel like it's looking like a little bit like this uh, color is looking a little bit too browny purple. So I'm going to go in and make an even brighter version of that. Let's go in and just take this, just a small amount. And then let's just lay that on top of there. We'll just uh, go like that. So I put this in and I decided it looked a little too maybe brown. For what we were working with here and then that's how we can just adjust it is by doing this so the basically we want the form to be very soft coming out into the shadow on the table so what we can do is we can now bring the table color back over and we're looking for a very soft edge so uh, when we say a soft edge what we mean by that is we want the edge of the shadow to look soft compared to like for example the edge of the fruit we want that to look solid and more sharp but we want the uh, shadow here to just kind of blend away into nothing the way shadows do you know the edge of a shadow um, especially on a light object like this and just gently cast with light is going to have a, a soft, soft edge. So what I can do now is come in with my filbert brush. It's just a dry filbert brush. And I can just uh, literally just soften that edge even further 
just kind of soft, 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 like a little butterfly, and just uh, has soft wings. There he goes. Okay, nice. There. All right, so shadow away. So now we can go back and work a little bit more on our fruit. So in the middle of our fruit, now you can see that we've got the underpainting, just the bare underpainting is still showing here. But let's go in and clean up some of these areas back here on the on the back of the of the pear. And uh, let's get our. I'm going to do that. To do that, you know what? I'm going to use a filbert brush. So I'm going to let me grab the filbert that we were just using. All right. And let's go back in with our darkest color, which was the uh, not the darkest, but this uh, alizarin crimson, permanent alizarin crimson. The reason they call it permanent alizarin crimson is there was at one point an alizarin crimson that was what they called fugitive, which meant that it was always uh, um, not going away, but it was like not staying as an archival and permanent thing. So what they did was they said, okay, we're gonna have a version that's permanent. That's, that's my understanding of how the how it went. But if anybody knows it differently than that, then go ahead and um, you know say so in the comments, and then we'll we'll know we'll know the true story of the permanent alizarin crimson. Now what I'm doing here is you see that edge. Remember when we did the grounding? What I'm doing now is just letting the brush tap in to the edge of where the, the fruit meets the table, the grounded area, and just letting that um, become soft. Okay, and now uh, let's go back in. Let's mix up a color using uh, yellow ochre. No, I don't wanna mix it with the brush here. I don't wanna get the, that way when I come back in with my brush, if I use this, I'll, um, I'm going to take a little bit of the table color. Let's, let's mix it with a little bit of the, um, uh, what is this? The, uh, oops, got a little yellow in there. Let's mix that with a little bit of the yellow ochre. Let's mix another color with the yellow plus yellow ochre. What I want to do is I'm going to tone down some of the colors in here by just doing a additional, uh, set of colors that are gonna soften this whole effect. So let me go now with this kind of, I'll, I'll say, I don't know, it's like a butterscotch color, kind of a buttery butterscotch color. And let's go in and um, reestablish some of the shapes that we see in the pair, the angles. And since this other paint is dry already, what's nice is we're getting a kind of a layering effect, which is always nice. Just using this um, filbert brush and just following the outlines of the edges of the, of the pairs. All right. You guys are all quiet on the chat. I wanna hear what uh, I want to hear what you guys are working on and let's uh if you have questions for me as i'm working on this i want you to you know i want you guys to ask me questions and hopefully i can answer to the best of my ability or i will answer to the best of my ability okay so bill says i think it looks great okay well thank you darling thank you all right so let's go in so we had the red and let's go back over with this uh, body color. And you can see that when we're doing this now, we're just kind of further establishing the forms. Let's go in with this lightest color that we made. And uh, when you put these colors on and then you think like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm just changing it drastically by doing these other colors. You know, that to me is part of the excitement of the painting. You can really, uh, you know, take it any direction that you like. So I'm gonna get, uh, let's get a little bit of this. I'm adding a little of the diorolide yellow. 
to that kind of middle color, a little bit more ochre. I want to get a color that's going to be something over here that we can blend with. Okay. And we're just, what we're doing now is we're just kind of adding to the complexity of the painting. When I say we're adding to the complexity, what we're doing, I'm just going to cut that, is uh, we're adding to the layered effect. So it's a, the story of the, of the painting. Let's come back with our white, get our highlight back on. Now, um, now that I'm laying these other colors on top, we're doing a technique called wet into wet, where um, what I'm trying to achieve here is I really want to get this feeling of the brush strokes. I want you to be able to see the, the brush strokes in here, because to me that it feels like it's alive. But you can see that you can just keep, you know, finessing it and working with it. And as you do that, um, what happens is, let's get a little purple in here. What happens is when we do that, we get a, um, there, there are points where you can say, oh, you know, it, it's, it looks how I want it to look. And, and really what the point of this is, is that you just keep working on the painting until it says what you wanted it to say. Or, it, or it, you've said everything that you need to say with the painting. So I'm putting on some strokes of pure purple here. And then now let's go back in and let's put some more lights in. Let's get some more three-dimensionality going. Get a little mix of a little yellow. Let's go back in here with our lighter colors. And let's get a transition between the lightest yellows and the uh, color here we need to go back in with a little bit more of the diorolite yellow like that there we go and a little color here and let's do a little bit of blending just taking my brush like that on the edge, just kind of making a few little marks. I'm going to take a little divot here, just let it play on the surface of the canvas. And here is really where you as an artist will be leaving your, your mark. You, um, everybody's brush stroke is unique to them. Everybody's decisions are their own decisions when they're painting. So. You know, your painting will look like your own work because you have the pressure that you put when you when you use the brush, the, the pressure of the paintbrush against the canvas, the, um, you know, really the intent that you have when you're painting, this, the feelings that you have, are you aggressive, are you relaxed, you know, all of that kind of thing. That is all going to show on that day of the day that you paint. And you'll know you'll have your style, of course. Everybody's got their style. But what will happen is um, everybody's just like your uh, when you when you write. Everybody's style is their own, and it's going to be unique to them. All right. So I've made some really kind of expressive colors here. And what I want to do now is I want to show you how to sign your painting. So um, let's uh, take a look here. Here's the liner brush. And what you do is you get your, uh, you add water. I'm going to add a little bit of water. If you can kind of see that. I'm going to just put a little bit, a little puddle of water, of the clean water, just off to the side. Make a little scoop. And then take a small amount. Just move that over here. We're just going to make a small little puddle. A very, very, get this moved over here, a 
very, very thin, almost like uh, ink. If, uh, if you guys, I don't know if any of you guys work with ink or not. But um, just a little bit here, okay. And now I can test that with the brush and I can show you how to do your signature. And if you watched the uh, live stream on Friday, we talked about different ways to do your signature, but I do like to do mine in, in uh, paint because it's fully archival and it becomes actually part of the part of the painting. So let's see if this is dry enough to do. Yeah, it is, okay. So I'll just do it over here. D. Tollerson. Okay, there we go. So it's just as easy as that. Just a quick little signature. And uh, you know, a person can go, you can go and fuss over things and you know, I kind of, personally, I like to, once it's it's done, I'll just do a little edge here. Um, you know, once I feel like it's done, I don't want to go back and do too much messing with it because I feel like it takes away the spontaneity of the painting, the spontaneity. But, uh, but yeah, that's all there is to it. And, and there you've got your little painting. Um, I am going to be taking this painting and then I'm going to be adding texture on it. Now, let's say, for example, I wanted to, I could keep uh, defining this and making it uh, further. I could add further details. So thank you for saying that. Yes, thank you. Um, but I could, you know, you could really uh, go as far or as, as uh, stop now or you could keep going further uh, with your paintings. So anyway, I hope that this has been helpful and I hope that you guys enjoyed um, enjoy being on the chat. I enjoyed having you here today. And um, I will be doing some more live streaming and I hope that you'll also be looking for um, on my... Uh, on my channel, I'm going to be doing a, uh, thank you, darling, I'm going to be doing a, a uh, Masterson Stay Wet palette unboxing. Then I'm also um, have an ASMR uh, painting that I'm, uh, I've got in the works where I'm, I'm painting very slowly, mixing paint, and doing a, re a guided relaxation um, activity where it's uh, just a chemical-free um, natural way to just relax. I'm going to be painting and just talking in a quiet voice and uh, we'll do some breathing, uh, just some deep breathing and some guided imagery type thing like imagine that you're, you know, floating or imagine that you're on a warm beach and that you're safe and, and secure and that kind of thing. So, and Hugo, thank you. Um, thank you for saying that you, that you learned. I, I appreciate that. And I think we as artists, we can always learn from each other, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. So, again, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, this is Dina Tollefson. Bye-bye. And now, you know what? I have to get my phone out of this thing because it's asking me, do I want to end my... Do I want to end my... Uh, video. Yes, I do. Okay, you want to stop streaming? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, bye guys.